grateful for health. Welcome, 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 everybody. Grateful for this community. Grateful for this opportunity. Grateful for life. I'm grateful for Zoom. Me too, man. Those are some amazing things to be grateful, guys. Gratitude is the state of receiving. I'm grateful for my willingness to learn. Always. Sheesh, you got go live educators on the stream. We got go live educators on the stream, man. I'm grateful for all of you guys for being here. Guys, you guys know what we're gonna do. We're gonna we're gonna break down some cryptos today, guys. <laughs> who's um whose bags? Whose bags are looking good? Actually, actually, you know, there's been some bags that we called out. I'm gonna recap some of the coins that we called out about about a month ago now. My top altcoins. Um, if you guys uh, took some of those calls that week, man, um, <laughs> the chat box is already going up crazy. Yeah, Uniswap, Ave are doing tremendously well. Guys, but let's jump right in. Let's let's bust on these technicals. Let's see what Bitcoin is doing. All right, we hit that forty thousand dollar mark, and since we've been pulling back, and you know, we've really been positioning ourselves into altcoins since. But looking at Bitcoin, you know, Bitcoin is something we still always want to watch, even if you're deep in the altcoin game, because Bitcoin sets the trend, right? Bitcoin determines market direction. The, the market follows Bitcoin. Um, one thing that's uh, really interesting to consider here is seeing these weekly candles stack on top of each other, and seeing this last weekly candle here like three bearish weekly candles and with this one here um the, the weekly close this week every week obviously it's huge to consider we we do the sessions every wednesday so we really get to see the weekly candle right in the middle of its progression but as we say every week watching that weekly close is something to be important especially with this um 618 level you know that is something if you if you guys have been tuning into crypto picasso you're obviously aware of that level and its significance um, what we have been studying in Bitcoin is, guys, because cryptocurrencies don't move like any other asset. The only thing you can compare cryptocurrencies to is themselves, um, because these things are fundamentally different in how they operate and how they move and how they work. You know, it's not just an asset. It's a network. Right. And so there's many factors that go into how these things move. But the price pattern that we've been studying for the last month or so was really what occurred here, you know, and even to, to include this price action that happened here at the all time high, you know, when we saw price kind of get stuck at the all time high, then make that new rally. And then we had that first pullback of our 2017 wave, right? 2017 was the wave, the first wave, or not the first wave, maybe the first wave many of you were familiar with, myself included. That was the year where, you know, Bitcoin went crazy. And so the first pullback we got in that year and that really great opportunity happened on that 618 level. And so we've been comparing, like I said, this price action that we had here to what the price action that we're seeing here today. And this is this level, like I said, the 618 level is going to be interesting to see if it's going to hold. But as of right now, guys, it doesn't look promising. Um, it does not look like it wants to hold that level. Like I said, a lot can change in a couple of days, but if the weekly candle were to close as it is, you know, that that kind of puts my eyes a little bit lower for Bitcoin, which in, honest, in all honesty, guys, is great. Is it not? Who wants cheaper Bitcoin? Like, I want cheaper Bitcoin. Hell yeah, give it to me, right? And we, we understand the emotional cycles of this market. We understand that smart money wants to shake out weak money, the weak hands. Um, but purely from the weekly time frame, guys, there's a, there's a gap right here that catches my eyes because, you know, some people have been calling out that, that, that getting all the way back down to that previous all-time high, I personally just don't see it. I personally just don't see it with all the demand happening right now. Um, it's pretty freaking insane to see the amount of demand happening, you know, with institutional names being mentioned with Bitcoin, um, institutions also not just being mentioned to be rumored getting into Bitcoin. We see institutions like Grayscale continually adding more Bitcoin to their balance sheet. We see more and more companies coming out and saying, hey, we're going to start doing this as well. We're going to start using some of our reserves, some of our treasury and to put it into Bitcoin. So the demand is there that we're not we're not worried about that. We're just looking to see potentially where is that reversal, right? Where could smart money drag the market into in a flash crash to scare people to reverse it and then send it higher? And I guess I guess my eyes are on that $25,000 range. It's also a major quarter level. Right. And so that's where my eyes go on the weekly time frame, purely technical and matching that with our fundamentals and sentimental analysis. I'm gonna hide this from my smaller time frames here because I have a little more drawn up on those. But then you yeah, jumping into the daily here. This is where things really we have pretty much that same zone here on the daily, that same gap. Um, anyways, that is actually a daily gap, but 
showed I hit the other one, but same here, guys. This this daily time frame is obviously still bullish, right? And at your four hour time frame, we're gonna jump in there and see that's obviously bearish. But again, that twenty five thousand dollar mark seems to be like that could be the magnet that could be this point where we like spike into and react and then again here the four hours guys is um we're, we're bearish we're just you know we, we've totally broken this bull trend here we're pulling back we broke we made new lows right and that thirty six thousand dollar level is the key level for me to see broken to flip this short-term bearish perspective and again this is great news for my dollar cost averagers my hodlers where who hodls bitcoin in here yo drop a one in the chat if you hodl bitcoin <laughs> who doesn't hodl bitcoin honestly <laughs> yeah those ones should be exploding right um so and i want to point out something here guys let's let's actually put this back out on a daily um let's say guys that you decided you know some of you guys are might be in this boat um you know not everybody got in started getting into bitcoin back at under ten thousand dollars which is totally okay because you're not too late um, especially when we're considering, let me pull back out that 2017 chart again. Let me pull back out, not the 2017 chart, but the 2017 action. And when you see this thing happening right here, you also see that price continue to rally from 1800 to 20,000, right? And so the wave is just beginning guys. The guys are just beginning, right? And what I want to point out is something that I always, um, advise is that to dollar cost average, right? And so if, if you're new to crypto, maybe you maybe you heard about Bitcoin for the first time right here at 38,000, at, at 39,000, at 40,000. Maybe this day right here at the all-time high of Bitcoin, January 8th was the first day you heard about Bitcoin. And let's say that wasn't a day I don't think I did the call. The 8th was a Friday, no. But let's say you were on my call on the 5th, right? And you decided, okay, he's telling me I got a dollar cost average and I shouldn't just throw a lump sum of money in. And this is a perfect example why you never should do that. Um, for example, if you would have thrown in, you know, a big lump sum, all right, I'm getting into Bitcoin here at these highs, you're sitting right now at 25% drawdown. You know, if you got it in above $40,000 at $30,000 right now, you're in 25% drawdown. Thanks. That's not, no one likes that. You know, that's, that's what I want to prevent you guys from, from happening to you guys. I don't want to see anyone's portfolio go big red like that, especially when you're brand new to a market and you just get in. I mean, sometimes... I know a lot of people that opened their portfolio started getting in and they're hitting me up and they're like, turn it what's going on? It's not doing anything. It's not going up. I'm like, patience, patience, right? This is why I also recommended you not to just jump in all at once. Instead, slowly build a position over time. And this is a perfect example why this works in your favor. It works in your favor when the market's going up and it works in your favor when the market's going down. That's the point. That's the beauty of dollar cost averaging because if you would have started building a position at the same time, you have 40,000, and let's say you're building a position even every day, right? You're obviously buying, a, you're buying, a, you're getting an entry then in every single one of these candles. But even if you're doing it every week, which is what I do, more reasonable, we all get paid every week. Most people get paid every week or every two weeks, you know? And so your first entry was in this candle. Your first entry is at 40, right? Let's say your second entry was in this candle and you got it at 36. Your third entry then in the next week has been at 33. And then this week you just got it at 30. You guys do the math, average that out. 40, 37, 36, 30, the average price is going to be right around $35,000 of which your entry at Bitcoin instead of it being at 40. And so now Bitcoin being at 30,000, when you, your, your average entry at 35, you know, your drawdown, you're looking at five, you know, 17% instead of 25. And as the market continues to go lower, you'd think your drawdown were, but what's actually happening is the market going lower for us dollar cost averages is amazing because what's that doing? That's lowering our average price of entry into Bitcoin. And so guys, it's one thing about Bitcoin is you don't have to understand where the market's going next to make money here. And that's for a fact about any, <laughs> any market, you don't have to know where, where it's going next to make money. And so play the numbers to your advantage. Listen to people who have been doing it. And like, this strategy is not mine, guys. This is a proven investment strategy, how to build a position in any market. Might just drop a link. Let me check that out. Let's pull it up here. I know this is going to be saucy. And this is just going to help me explain exactly what I was explaining, right? And let's see here. Oh, perfect. Look at If you, let's do this. Let's type it out, right? Let's do this. If you would have entered the first, let's say, let's just do January 1st. January 1st, 2021. And you did a periodic amount. Hopefully I can figure out how to use this quick so we're not sitting here like, what? 
let's say you put a hundred bucks in a week. That's good, right? And yeah, you do it as you said every single week. Do I have to press a button to start this? Enter. Enter. Huh. It doesn't update these. Maybe it's too recent, but I'm gonna drop this Meg drop this in the chat. Check it out, guys. You can test this out for yourself test it out for you know versus just investing money and i guarantee almost every single way you test it you know you're in profits you're in profits and so that was just a little side note there guys with dollar cost averaging and like i said for a dollar cost averages we don't care if the bitcoin continues to fall that's giving us better prices at bitcoin right and so you have to understand yourself guys you have to be real with yourselves understand what you're here to do you know, I know many of you guys day trade these other markets and you're learning how to do build a store. You're also maybe potentially building a business. You know, that's why I love about cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency can be that thing that you have on the side that you're just building slowly but surely. You're keeping an eye on it, right? Of course, who doesn't want like check up on check up on Bitcoin every week? That's why we have these calls, right? We I do it for you. I tell you what's happening, I tell you the important stuff, the market trends. And it's a way for you to just kind of build a passive income to build a source of wealth that can grow and appreciate over time, right? And so don't make it harder than it needs to be, guys. Like really, just set up that auto buy and let it ride, let it ride. And so yeah, Bitcoin guys, let's drop it down to the four hour. We were already looking at this. It, it's like I said, it's looking very bearish. And like I said, for me, there's no reason to even get down on one hour and 15 minute time frames at this point. We're still waiting for that reversal to happen. And that's also for me, you know, like I'm taking a very cautious approach on margin journey because, you know, this is it's, it's enticing guys. Who, how is it not enticing to want to try to catch the Bitcoin buys, right? You want to catch that next spike up. You want to catch that next parabolic move on margin, you know, and it can give you a bias to always be looking for buys you know and so what we want to do is we're going to wait for those um trends to reverse back into our favor on the four hour etc right before we go looking again these margin trades because obviously when the market is trending hard the ability to enter trades and catch like these pumps out are insane you know swipe coin the team at dcx has been calling some insane trades a lot of times recently we've been catching we've been catching the bottoms going into profit and end up getting um, stopped out at break even. Maybe you're securing partials here. But like I said, these are times not to day trade Bitcoin. These are times to accumulate Bitcoin. This is the time to be building your position into Bitcoin. This isn't, in my opinion, the time to be day trading Bitcoin. There are times, of course, when Bitcoin's blasting off, maybe you're like chilling on building your portfolio because Bitcoin's going parabolic, but you're not in your day trading, right? And so there's those seasons and temporary times where we're doing both. Um, so let's let's look at ETH also as well. ETH on, is actually holding bullish structure very, very well. Here, let me pull it back up to the weekly. Um, we haven't quite broke the all-time high in our high time frames yet. We're, we're looking to see that clear break on these higher time frames. We're just chilling there at that high. Um, but when ETH breaks, guys, it's, it's, it's going to be exciting because when cryptos, as we saw what Bitcoin did when it broke the high, here, right? What happened? It just went nuts for a month, four straight weeks. It doubled, went from 20,000 to 40,000. So I, I, I have similar expectations for Ethereum. When we break this high, I don't think it'll take much for us to get to 3K. Um, it, it won't take much. Why? Because we're entering into price discovery. We're entering into the point where you, you can't do technical analysis on, on Ethereum when it's at $1,800, because what are you going to analyze it with what levels what previous history <laughs> right the only previous history you can do is like like i said when we did before with the previous cycles of bitcoin the last time we broke the high how how crazy did it go right and as we've seen in the past with all cryptos the ethereum chart here doesn't have a lot of data but when cryptos break all-time highs guys they they go crazy they go crazy and so ethereum especially with its fundamentals rolling out you know things that are happening on ethereum the network people are very excited i really guys i've, I've explained this many many times but I think that Ethereum is in a like stage of where Bitcoin was in 2017. Ethereum is going to have that year this year. What Bitcoin did in 2017 in terms of like the fundamentals and the sentimentals of people understanding what it was, people talking about it. So back in 2017, you know, I think everybody heard about Bitcoin. Um, dollar cost averaging does work in Coinbase. You can set up auto buys on there pretty easily. Um, but yes, 2017. Every, that was the year, probably most of us, who who heard about Bitcoin for the first time in 2017? Drop a five. That was me. That was me. That was the first time I heard about Bitcoin. 
2005, a lot of us, right? And that was the year where everyone was like, damn, Bitcoin, what's that? Oh, and then, you know, you maybe watch a little article on YouTube, you read something on Instagram, oh, this new revolutionary digital currency, you know, some people like myself bought in, um, I got fucking clapped, <laughs> who else got clapped, maybe if you're not, if you're not afraid to be ashamed, <laughs> if you're not, if <laughs> you're not ashamed to admit it, I got clapped, um, I bought in uh, the highs, I bought into the euphoria, I bought into the hype, you know, and it was a learning experience, I'm so glad I did, you know, and that's the craziest thing, you know, you stuck around after going through 2017, seeing what happened, you know, after the come down, we knew that we were going to have another bull market, right? But what happened in 2017 was getting continuing here, comparing Bitcoin and Ethereum. It was like Bitcoin hit the scene and everyone's like, damn, this thing's crazy. But nobody really was like, I don't think that many people like understood what it really was. And it was the first time people were learning about it before that Bitcoin was, that was nerd shit. Nobody knew about it. And then after that, you know, and now in this bull market, now in this bull market, everyone knows what Bitcoin is. You've already heard about Bitcoin. Now institutions, it's it's a common, it's a store of value. That's it's gold 2.0. It's that's set. Like that's why like that has been established now as a narrative for Bitcoin. And I see Ethereum having the very same kind of year this year in 2021 as Bitcoin did in 2017. It's exploding onto the scene. Now it's not just Bitcoin. Now people are like, damn, what's that Ethereum thing? Everyone's talking about this Ethereum. I don't know what it is, but it's fucking going crazy. And then, you know, by the time the next market rolls around, people will finally understand what Ethereum is. But I think this is that year where Ethereum really breaks onto the scene, where it explodes into the mass consciousness. And it makes sense because, you know, all these cryptocurrencies, when you talk about a global level of understanding, nobody really even barely understands what bitcoin is and so for there even to be a second one in that global level of a consciousness of awareness for ethereum to even get to that level puts it in that elite level with bitcoin that's you know completely in my in my understanding in my opinion on a league of its own like come like the altcoins other altcoins and bitcoin and ethereum like bitcoin and ethereum are internet money and in fact ethereum did more transactions than bitcoin did this year Trend, they settled more transactional volume than bitcoin did you know, so these two are the elite, and I think Ethereum is going to distance itself and put itself in that category with Bitcoin. Is like these are the for sure. Like this is internet money. You know, and I think that's what Ethereum is going to have this year. Digital oil, exactly. It's going to build like everything. You know, and if you look at what I'm going to get into now here, this is what I kind of promised you guys is, you know, me going over this top 25 here, looking at these altcoins. We talk about Bitcoin and Ethereum a lot, but that's my um, kind of summary for those two today. I want to get into these altcoins and I want to talk about some things. You know, this, I want to be blunt today, guys. <laughs> I'm going to be super blunt today. I'm going to give you guys my straight up honest opinions. Might hurt some of you guys. Might be different than your opinions. That's totally okay, guys. This is investing. You invest what you believe in. You know, I'm going to give my opinion on Stellar Lumens today. I'm going to give my opinion on a lot of projects some of you guys might hold. And again, I'm not not calling shots. I'm not trying to be me. I'm just giving you guys what I understand, what I know, and my opinion. And at the end of the day, you got to invest in yourself and your intuition. All right. Um, so I'm just going to give you some of the information that I know. But yeah, we had a couple good questions here. Gabrielle, Vitalik and the development of Ether Classic. Vitalik does not, um, Vitalik Buterin is a genius. Um, he's the one who invented Ethereum. Um, that's pretty much my blunt opinion on him. That guy reminds me of Elon Musk, probably going to be a really important, really rich, really successful nerdy dude that's going to be driving a lot of development for the future world. He built Ethereum like two to G. He's beaten up with Vladimir Putin. He's been up with world leaders. And he's like, he, he built Ethereum when he was, I don't know, like 18, 19 years old, something like that. Some crazy like that. Um, Ethereum Classic. Uh, that <laughs> that's an unfortunate situation. Um, Ethereum team split ways. Uh, well, there was a divide in the Ethereum community. Ethereum wanted to upgrade. Some of the people didn't. The actual Ethereum Classic is the original blockchain of Ethereum, but that's a very small community of people. I don't see a lot of things happening there, um, but obviously everyone moved over to the Ethereum. So Ethereum Classic is kind of like People got left behind almost. <laughs> um, so with with this top 25, guys, there's there's a lot of projects on this top 25 that, I, in my opinion, are really overvalued and really are just sitting on bases of sitting on market caps that were completely built up by 2017 hype. You know, in my opinion, I've been following the market ever since. Guys, I got fucking clapped in 2017, but I didn't um, – didn't shy away from the market. I continue to study it, continue to learn about it and to read what was going on, you know, and that's why I, um, I'm so bullish on Ethereum guys. 
I, I'm so bullish on Ethereum because that's where things are happening. <laughs> that's where things are being built. The entire DeFi ecosystem, which today has $24.8 billion locked into it. Every single one of these projects, guys, are built on Ethereum. They're not built on Stellar. They're not built on EOS. They're not built on NEO. They're not built on any other blockchain. They're built on Ethereum, guys. So with that being in mind, you guys know how bullish I am on DeFi. I do believe actually some of these DeFi protocols will be moving into the top 25 and taking the place of some of these coins that I think are sleeping. I honestly, they're like a lot in the crypto world. They call them zombie chains. They're big chains with big market, big marketing, lots of hype. Lots of promises, fancy websites, and they have these really awesome, powerful blockchains that are so much better than Ethereum, yet nobody uses them. Nobody is working on them. Nobody's built anything on them. How come on this DeFi, the top DeFi projects in the world, how come no other platform has launched a single other, a top 60, not even one in the top 63? There's one of them on Bitcoin in here. Where is it at? Lightning Network. <laughs> that's the only DeFi protocol built on top of Bitcoin. That's not the only one that's not built on Ethereum. You know, and so I'm I'm an investor that I invest into value. I, I want to invest into because I understand, understand here, guys. Crypto, this market, how it works, we're still learning how to evaluate projects. So there is no standard way to value a cryptocurrency project. It's all based on what you know and what you think is valuable. You know, the traditional ways in which we measure stocks, you know, their profitability, um, the, the ratios between different things like their overhead, you know, their income, all those different things, those ratios that you can divide and like calculate stocks, those kind of things aren't really the same and don't really apply. And we don't have for cryptocurrency, we don't really have those kind of metrics. And so a huge, huge thing that drives cryptocurrency price. In fact, the reason why Polkadot, a network that doesn't even have a running like they have test nets, they have things built, being built on top of it. But the thing that Polkadot wants to deliver, their main call to like value, their biggest product has not even been launched yet. And they're the number four most valuable cryptocurrency. Why is that? Because they have a very strong narrative. So guys, regardless, and this is the part where you have to decide, you know, are you going to be someone in this market who just follows the narratives, who follows the sentiment? who just gets carried with the masses of hype and excitement everywhere? Or are you going to seek to develop a way to understand these projects on a level that allows you to almost, you know, on a level that allows you to create your own opinions? Critical thinking is everything, right? And so you have to be able to create your own opinions about things. And the way that I do, the way that I establish what I think is valuable here without, regardless of what the market thinks, regardless of what's going on in the hype and the news, you know, I, I really, really value blockchains and these networks that have delivered a product that have actual users, like that have a user base. Because here's the thing. These are networks. These are digital technologies. Like, you know, the Zunes, remember, you guys remember Zunes? Were they called Zunes? They were like the iPod competitors. Anybody you guys had a Zune? I feel like Mike, I feel like Mike would have been that guy that had a Zune. He was a total Android person, then he flipped over to Apple because Jason Brown has Apple. But <laughs> yeah, soon. Um, those things were dope. I know you did, Mike. <laughs> those things were dope. And I, I remember some of my friends had them, but guess what, guys? Nobody used them. <laughs> they were cool. They were probably cooler than Apple. They probably had better features. They were, <laughs> but guess what? Nobody used them. Where does Zoom now? Ask a like five-year-old kid, a ten-year-old kid with I'll even ask my brother and sister. They fucking have no idea what a zoom is. They get clapped, right? And so it's like that's a huge part, and you have to, it's part of the game, understanding like the narrative, understanding like, dude, what projects have things going for them. But on top of that, we want to combine projects that have strong narratives, strong storylines with projects that have real fundamentals, that have real development and unfortunately in zoom's case i think that did actually have real fundamentals but there was something missing but in cryptocurrency there are projects that have great marketing but very very poor fundamentals which in my opinion leads to one day a, a, a very very bad day in the markets similar to something that happened in xrp where one day a black a black swan event comes out of nowhere and just destroys the fucking price because there was ever no real world utility and you can't have something holding millions and billions of dollars worth of valuation 
and not actually ever delivering. And here's the thing in 2017, it was crazy because if you put blockchain anything on, a, on an ERC20 token, if you just said, hey, we're building this blockchain, we're going to build blockchain to fucking, I don't know, excuse my language, guys, I like to cuss, this is who I am. Um, but if you literally, you could have built something called, like, you could have built a blockchain that was going to start poop. I swear, I'm not even kidding you, and you would have got millions of dollars. Like, you would have raised easy, million dollars. Easy. 10 million, 50 million, 100 million. EOS raised $1.4 billion. What is EOS built? <laughs> that, that project's a joke. We'll start there. We'll fucking start there. That project is a joke. It's a joke of a joke. I don't know a single person in the world using EOS. I don't know anything being built on EOS. I haven't heard a single thing about EOS. I don't know anyone using their blockchain. You know, you guys, maybe you're EOS fans, you could update me, you could give me some information, but I generally think of myself as pretty well versed and understanding and just, I like to follow the space as a whole. You know, this, this thing has completely failed to deliver on its um, expectations of just being this ultimate network, right? And you see the price here has really done nothing, but at the same time, we're, this is crazy because we're holding billions of dollars here. This project is worth two, $2.3 billion. I think EOS 3.0 is launching right now. I don't know how they're already on their third. Oh, oops, I typed it three, three times. EOS 3.0 is coming out right now or something like that. Um, sounds like EOS 2.0 and 1.0 weren't very successful. So, yeah, I, I don't know what's going on with that project. That's one right there, guys. Shots fired. I, I don't I don't see the value in that thing. Um, like I said, EOS de derives to be a direct competitor um, or not maybe direct competitor, but drives to do basically the same thing as... Um, Ethereum being a platform, and I like I like I said I I follow the space. I've seen very real world production from them. Um, their technicals, yeah, sure, but not, the, the, I don't even know if anyone's coding that project anymore. I don't even know if they have any active developers. Like, who is sure they might have people launching EOS 3.0, but nobody's building a DApp. Like, who? Like, what? You know, I don't I don't understand what's going on with that project. Um, like I said, not I haven't seen much out of them. So. Um, that EOS is a specific example of something that I'm very bearish on. So for like you guys who are taking notes, you smart people, the note takers here, the smart people, I, I forget shit. I have to take notes. Um, I'm very bearish on smart, on ecosystems, on smart contract platforms, on, on people, on projects. There's two exceptions. There's two exceptions in this market and they're, they're on this top and in the top six right here. I'm very, I'm quite bearish on, any ecosystem or any blockchain that's decided that, hey, we're going to be the blockchain world. We're going to be the place where everyone builds their DAS. We're going to be, because we're better than Ethereum, because we have faster this, we have faster that. I'm so bearish on those platforms. Because in the three years since cryptocurrency has had high, I haven't seen a lot come out of them. Versus Ethereum, oh my God, things are exploding. right? And the two exceptions to this would be Cardano and Polkadot. Cardano is an exception because I've followed their process. I followed what they're doing. They didn't promise anything. They haven't promised the fact that we're going to launch this is going to be better. They have actually taken the tortoise approach and they've gone so, so slow in their development. But at the same time, you know, that's that's a lot of people look at that and they say, well, these are the hairs that just branched out there, launched something, didn't really work, you know, and they're in shambles. And then you have the Cardano approach, which is take a slow and steady and, you know, they've been in development for over five years and they're finally, finally, finally launching their smart contract platform in March. So Cardano is huge. Cardano is on my radar right now. And I've, I've definitely mentioned this from the project in the past. I, I think Cardano will hold its spot up here. Cardano is on my radar because they are launching it and because they've taken such a such a careful approach to doing blockchain, the careful approach to doing this. And so there is rumors. The thing to watch with Cardano is going to be it's going to be watching to see what projects launch on Cardano, how successful they are. Are they able to take some of the people from Ethereum? Apparently, when they do launch, it's going to be very compatible. So people will directly be able to take their app from Ethereum to Cardano. Today, right now, ETH fees are, can be anywhere from 5 to $15, $20 on Ethereum. So a dApp says, hey, we can move our platform over to Cardano and the fees are, you know, a dollar, 50 cents. You might see a lot of dApps all of a sudden making the switch. And like I said, that's why I think Cardano has a great potential ahead of them. It's going to be yet to see if it works, right? Something to be watching. And then Polkadot as well. Polkadot just has that hype. Like I said, I'm not personally invested in Polkadot because I can't invest in something that doesn't have a network 
or at least like a date for it to come out. You know, it, it's supposed to be developing this year, but like I've just seen this hype um, go crazy. I, I'm, I am not too pinning it on Polkadot at bullish or bearish, but I'm very excited actually just to watch and see what they release. It's a very different updated version of blockchain. Um, and they have things called pair chains. And there's going to be projects competing to be built on top of Polkadot on their parachain. So that's going to be something to watch as well. So Ethereum, Polkadot, and Cardano are the only ecosystems that have my eye where I'm actually seeing, okay, obviously Ethereum is built. It's working. There's already an entire ecosystem, a whole DeFi ecosystem built on Ethereum. So I'm looking to see if Polkadot and Cardano will be able to launch something similar this year. Right. And so with that bias of, OK, smart contract systems like these ecosystems for cryptos, these are the ones that I'm looking at. The ones that don't excite me, that I have no interest in at all. Stellar Lumens, guys, I'm sorry. Um, I don't still understand the value case for Stellar Lumens. And that will wrap that will get involved with something else. I'm going to say here because I have Stellar Lumens is kind of a hybrid, but EOS, that's the one as well. Tron, NEM. You know, I, I don't see these projects being here. You know, you go to Tron's website, like this thing, I don't even know what this is, yo. Like it doesn't even come up as a first like part. I, I know what Tron is because it's been around for a while, but it, it's it was a, a absolute beast at pumping out marketing and excitement, and, like getting people really jazzed about it. And they're like, damn, um, I'll talk about that in a second. Um, and, you know, it's like, I don't even know what this is. Like, what do you, how do you, like, I don't know. Tron's, yeah, Tron, they got all, yeah, Tron's just haven't seen much come out of them. They, they actually caught my interest this, like this summer, because apparently they were building some Tron DeFi, um, but never heard of it ever again after that. So those other ecosystems like Tron, NEM, EOS, the ones from 2017 that were like, we're the Ethereum killers. Eh -eh. For 2021, eh -eh. there's going to be some things growing way, way faster than these ones. So, Next thing I'm kind of, that's what I'm kind of, next thing I'm kind of bearish by on Stellar is yes, because I am bearish on payment networks. I am bearish on payment networks, which includes a lot of these currencies here, XRP, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, you, Stellar Lumens, Bitcoin at SV, and even Monero. What's, what's the purpose? What's the purpose of these coins? Why would I pay you in? XRP. Everyone wants Bitcoin and ETH. Nobody wants your XRP. Nobody wants your Litecoin. Nobody wants your Bitcoin Cash. Nobody wants your Bitcoin SV and nobody wants your Stellar. Why? Because other projects have already fixed the solution. We don't need a payment network. The governments are making central bank digital currencies. Do you not think that they're going to, do you think that we're actually going to transact in Stellar Lumens of all cryptocurrencies in the world? What? And I know some of you guys will say, well, their use case is more than that. But I just looked at Stellar Lumens. I did some more research on it today because I heard somebody talking about it. And I'm like, well, maybe they've done something. Maybe they've upgraded their use case. Maybe they've decided that they're going to be something more. And it's, it's built to fill a special role, right? And it's like this... If for me, a big part of crypto is like, it has to make sense. Like if I read about something for like 30 seconds and I don't get it and it's like, oh damn, that's it. That's, or you like, you don't see it right away. And you're like, oh, that's what they're doing. It doesn't make sense like that. It's not going to make sense to anybody else. If you pull up Stellar Lumens website, what is this? I don't know. Why did, what is, why does it require Lumens? Well, you're telling me now that I have to use your coin. You don't even tell me why. Well, it, it says why, why do I have to use this coin? Probably to pay some fee run this network to descend it but what does it do what is it the pot like and to sum it up because i've done the research seller lumens wants to be a payment network and a smart contract platform and like i said i'm bearish on both of those things because ethereum is going to be the smart contract platform if it's not ethereum it's going to be cardano or polka dot or they're all going to exist together and bitcoin is the payment network and actually ethereum is a bigger payment network than bitcoin and like i said i really have a strong belief also that central banks you know china is getting really far along with their digital bank currency, their central bank digital currency, these will be the payment networks. You know, you're going to be, they're, they're not going to be a, a private network like Stellar. It's not going to be a private network like XRP, guys. The banks aren't adopting XRP. I, I'm not sure why people still trade this. Um, it, 
I was under the impression that I, once I heard it was getting delisted from most exchanges, it, it was deleted from my mind as relevance from this market. It, there, there's no there, like it's just there, there's other here's the thing guys i'm not trying to be like shit on people who have these bags i'm not like you know i used to hold these projects every single to coin i'm talking about right now i used to hold at one point i used to hold stellar lumens i used to hold xrp stellar lumens being backed by ibm by the way dude ibm is the biggest biggest dinosaur of computers there is like they they are before apple like, how come IBM isn't a part of like Facebook or Google or YouTube or the biggest tech companies in the world? They're not because they're a giant. They're predated. Their days are numbered. Like a modern project, like a blockchain being sponsored, like, you know, that's like Warren Buffett sponsoring a cryptocurrency. I'm going to stay the fuck away from that crypto. <laughs> when old money, old things try to sponsor new things, like, Nah. And that's why I think like XRP and XLM messed up in their direction is because they tried to like market themselves to be like the includers of the past, of, of the old regime, of the old system. XRP wants to finance the banks. They want to service the banks. Like in Stellar Lumens, Project Vision wasn't that much different. The same guy who built XRP built Stellar Lumens. He decided they just wanted to market it more for public institutions, not private institutions. Still the same thing. I'm not really interested in any crypto that's going to find that's going to be servicing institutions personally, because the biggest protocols, the things that I see is revolutionary, the things that are exploding right now. You know, like I said, buy Bitcoin cash. Let's talk about that. Bitcoin cash is literally a bunch of people that think that they, they have the real Bitcoin. <laughs> they think that the Bitcoin that everybody else thinks is the Bitcoin isn't Bitcoin and that theirs is the real Bitcoin. Like these are some nutty people, yo. I'm like, <laughs> Like, I'm serious. Like, and you guys got to be careful getting into some of these communities because shit, the brainwashing is real. Like, go on Bitcoin cash forums. Like, that shit is like, man, <laughs> I made a Bitcoin cash bowl one day. Holy cow. You know, it, they, they, they actually think they are the real Bitcoin. Why else would there be another Bitcoin? Bitcoin cash. Well, it's a better Bitcoin. No. <laughs> let's, let's like someone coming out with this fucking fancy fake gold and calling it gold cash. <laughs> It's like, what? You can't do that, bro. And then it's funny enough because Bitcoin Cash then again had a diversion. They again split. And then there was another Bitcoin called Bitcoin SV. Any other Bitcoin, Bitcoin Gold, Bitcoin SV, Bitcoin this, Bitcoin that. No, 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 no. Guys, this is like a really, like, I'm going in. I'm being so savage. <laughs> I'm just giving you guys my blunt shit that, like, I feel like a lot of people won't say because, you know, I'm not going to pat my own back, but I am going to pat my own on the back a little bit here. You know, I've been talking about XRP for years. You know, if you knew, you know. And it's like, I'm just, I want to help people avoid the mistakes that I made. I don't want you guys to buy into hype. Guys, I bought this one coin, like Nano. Like I saw it at a dollar. I saw it go all the way up to like $27 and I finally bought it. And <laughs> like I lost them. So it's like, I've been there, guys. I bought these coins. I bought into this FOMO. I bought into the hype. I bought into these crazy like projects and they really can, they have themselves convinced that their coins the shit and that's the only reason why i think these coins are sitting up here so to kind of summarize here with this top 10 bitcoin ethereum legit of course polka dot cardano exciting launching new things tether i don't even know why tether is in the top three it's just a stable coin it's just something that functions the market it doesn't go up and down in value xrp we all know is dog shit litecoin it's unoriginal it's bitcoin copied and they changed the block size the founder sold at the highs not a fan. Payment network. Don't see the value. Bitcoin Cash, same thing. Binance Coin. That's a little more interesting. So Binance Coin, I'm very neutral on Binance Coin, guys. Um, Binance is an amazing exchange. It's centralized. You know, I think they always have a great role in the community. Um, their coin, you know, definitely does. I, I've definitely seen it capture value. I, I made my, I caught Binance Coin the first pump up. I, that was one of my first big crypto trades, actually, was Binance Coin. Very neutral on Binance Coin. But, you know, going forward, USD, Stellar, like not very bullish on stellar wrapped bitcoin also is just a functional thing it's a bitcoin on ethereum so it really shouldn't even be in this rankings bitcoin sv again any side thing of bitcoin eos again and now i have to talk about monero this one's sad guys this one's sad i know there's some monero fans out here i know my boy Caesar is a monero fan it's this is a sad one and i think it's like these things they're very 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 dope because like, this is like what Edward Snowden needs. This is what like Julian Assange needs. Like people who are like, you know, privacy is a right. I believe that privacy is a right. You know, and I think I saw a really good quote. I don't want to butch this. Let me, let me see if I can pull it out of my head. 
You know, the same people that say we don't need privacy. No, I can't do it. I don't can't do it. I can't. <laughs> I already went. <laughs> I, can't, I don't remember what it was. I don't think I tried. But privacy, I do believe, is a human right. And this coin fully enables you to have privacy and, you know, transact privately. But the unfortunate thing is our government doesn't like that. <laughs> our government does not want you to be transacting anonymously through the Internet. Oh, so, you know, they've, they've essentially declared war on, on privacy coins. And, you know, unfortunately, the market just really doesn't value them that much. Like I said, unless you're Julian Assange, unless you're one of these guys, like, do you really need it? No, but yeah, we understand the like the dystopian world we're living in and the censorship and like the and then so I think these things unfortunately should be very, very valuable, but unfortunately I don't think the market will value them. You know, and like I said, NEM from these other platforms, not a big fan. V chain, you know, V chain and theta. I gotta talk about these two real quick. And then I'm gonna talk about the ones I do like in the top 25 and the ones I think are gonna jump up into the top 25 um theta is a very very interesting use case i just started learning about theta maybe a couple of weeks ago um kind of just missed a wave on that one i don't know i didn't see much about it um but theta is one of those projects that's like all right we're gonna like do some like real world stuff right they they want to um video delivery you know like they're they're all about content you know theta i think has a tremendous tremendous use case and like if this like i'm not like a i'm no expert on this project honestly i know probably in the top 25 this project i probably know the least about um but I, it's definitely caught my eye you know and google samsung binance are running nodes on it you know with this being with data it's just like it are we going to be able to get that out it's it apparently wants to do video streaming and you know so if this is one of the things it's like in crypto world, you have to understand, you can't understand everything here. I've been very um, involved and very focused on DeFi, you know, and so VeChain is pretty much the same thing for me. It's another project. I know a little bit more about VeChain, but VeChain is a project that's doing something completely different. VeChain has to do with supply chain management. And, you know, it's cool. I think blockchains will be very, very valuable in content creation, you know, YouTube, streaming, that kind of thing. I think blockchains will be very valuable in supply chains. But it's just not something I look into. It's not something I care. I don't care about supply chains. I'm not really the biggest person that cares about content creation and YouTube things. So if those are your niches and those are things you understand and you want to research, like by all means, I, I can't give a, I can't give the the, the squad a opinion on these two because I'm not that educated on their what they're like their their industries that they're working in. Right. Like I said, I, I'm really interested in blockchain ecosystems building financial products. So with that being said, I'm very neutral on Theta and VeChain. Um, one more I got to point out. Dude, I don't know where this thing comes from, but I see it on every single YouTube video. I see it in every single spam fucking inbox thing. I know they're launching a card, and I know it's supposed to give rewards, but when I see, like, the most spammed thing ever, like, it just, uh, I'll never be able to like that project. I know some of you guys like that one, but that's my two cents. Giving you guys, I'm just being blunt and honest here. But now for the good stuff. Now for the good stuff. I'm just reading, catching up in these comments. <laughs> I appreciate you guys. These comments. <laughs> and I'm sorry, guys. I'm hurting things. It's just my opinion. Y'all like y'all have some pins. Y'all fucking buy some bags that I don't like and make some money and like talk some shit. Like I'm serious. Like I'm friendly with it. It's not gonna hurt my feelings. I don't take things personally. It's it's fun, guys. At the end of the day, we gotta have fun here. Um, we're just talking. We're speculating. We're fucking speculating here. At the end of the day, I don't know shit. I don't know. Shit. Ooh, Mike Slam synthetics. Yeah, that's one of them. So now for the good part. Now for the good part. What do I like in this top 25? Because I was going off. Like, <laughs> I was just railing on some of these ones. What I've actually starred most of the ones I like. Obviously, our first one, Uniswap, guys. We called the, we, I talked about Uniswap on Christmas. I talked about Uniswap on my official top five altcoin videos. We called out Uniswap on January. I know it was the first week of January. January 6th was the day that we did it. And Uniswap was trading at $6.30. Today, you're up 15. You know, you're up double, almost three times. You're up two and a half times on your money. Literally in three weeks. Jeez, guys, honestly, this is um, full transparency. This is why I fully transitioned into trading cryptos. I've just realized, like, less is more for me, especially. Uh, it's fitting my psychology. I love this shit, too, so I'm all in it. But, yes, Uniswap. And I'm not going to take too much time talking about Uniswap. We talk about Uniswap a lot on these weekly calls. Check out my YouTube if you want more information on Uniswap. This thing's going to be big. 
It's going to be big. It already is. I see uni reaching in this top 10 easy money. And guys, we're creeping up there every day. She's like, I swear last week we were like 15. Um, right now, Uniswap holding the number 13 ranking in the crypto market cap. In order for us to get in that top 10, we got to crack that $6 billion market cap number. So if we get up to basically, we need about another 50% on uni, which would put us at about 50% of 17. It put us at about $20 Uniswap. <laughs> yes, sir. $20 Uniswap gets us in the top 10, guys. We You had it here at $6, $6 and minus. Aave, one of our other favorite protocols that we're looking at. Aave is a decentralized liquidity base, like liquidity creator. Like they are like basically the new bank. They are insane with what they're actually delivering to the world. And like I said, guys, I value real world products. You know what blows my mind? I was talking to John about this for a second. Let's check it here. The market cap of Aave right now is $3.4 billion. This is what the market thinks it's worth, right? This isn't like market cap. We talked about it. I'm going to upload the call from Monday. I really went into detail about market cap and how market caps work. It's not that there's $3.4 billion invested into Aave right now. That is actually a different number that I'm going to show you. You can actually check that number. And that's why I love DeFi protocols. But the market cap is like what the market has basically speculated the value of Aave to be today right now. Obviously, that goes up and down basing on the bidding and demanding of the price, right? But it's insane to me because traditionally in finance, traditionally in markets, and then traditionally when you're investing into startups, you're investing into something that's growing. Right now, a great example is Tesla. Tesla is an emerging company. Obviously, they've had tremendous success already. But the, the stock price that Tesla trades at right now is in no way representative of the amount of money that Tesla actually makes right now. The reason why the stock is so high is because people are speculating on the future revenue that Tesla can create. They're speculating that, dude, Tesla's going to keep growing. They're going to keep making more money. And that's kind of how... Generally speaking, how the evaluations of these companies go and of, of launching products and launching companies is that they're overvalued on the market because you're kind of trying to guess the difference and how much it's going to grow and how much it could futurely produce. So a lot of times these market caps represent our opinion of what the, the product can produce in the future. You know what blows my fucking mind? Ave has more money actually in the protocol than what it was worth on the market. Ave has $3.6 billion locked in its protocol. If you've never seen it before, it's pretty freaking dope. The other day, they had like 60% on your die. If you enter, if you deposit die here, you got 60. Look at other oh, numbers are a little bit different, but 3.3 is in this protocol. And it's only worth 3.4. And actually, the other week, it, there was a, I don't know if arbitrage is the right word, but there was a difference in the sense that the market cap was less than the amount of money pulled in the protocol. And like, you can see all that. You can see those numbers here. And that's why I love DeFi products so much, guys, because these are the few blockchains I see on the market that actually have billions of dollars invested into them, not just in speculation of their token working well. They have billions of dollars invested in them into the products. People are buying the products. They're not investing to speculate. They're using the products. I know a lot of people that use Uniswap that don't even hold Uniswap. They don't even believe in holding the token, but they use it. That's something I'm invested in. <laughs> because when you look at the blockchain market, when you look at this top 25, when you look at the crypto, I have to call it the crypto market because not all these are blockchains. <laughs> um, when you see tokens that have these high, high market caps and they don't even have products, <laughs> but then you see these tokens that have real world products and we're starting to see it, guys. Uni and Aave, like I said, I think will be in the top 10 very, very soon. Uni for for Ave, I'm oh, sorry, for Ave to get into the top 10. Again, we have to get to that six billion market cap. We almost need to see Ave double. We need to see Ave at about five hundred dollars. All right, let's pull the technicals for these two because these are my these are my fucking babies. I love these two. Ave, you know, just exploding, exploding. This weekly is looking good. We're we're, we're due for a pullback any day here. That's my next zone I'm looking at for scooping Ave because guys, as long as these. And especially when you look at the alt Bitcoin cycles, these cur currencies against Bitcoin, Ave just broke the all-time highs, right? Just broke the all-time highs. And so it's like, I, I, there's no reason for me to go against these trains yet. 
there's no reason to go against Ave and Uniswap and start going the opposite direction. In fact, you know, just even for them to get into the top tens, you're looking at a double for Ave and 50%. Like you can chase 100Xs, you can chase like the big, like trying to quadruple, like doing stupid things on Bitcoin on low caps. But if you know some like decently priced, blue chips that are like not in the top 10, even them jumping in the top 10s are going to be good gains in your bags, guys. And these are ones that, yeah, we've been investing into. So we're going to expect those to keep going. So I love those two protocols. Um, going on, some protocols, synthetics. I know some of you guys had asked that in the chat. Synthetics is one of my favorites as well. Um, synthetics is sitting in at number 23 at 1.7 billion for so for synthetics to get in that top 10 and then again synthetics is a product guys that people have real money in there's a hundred 1.73 billion dollars synthetics is the biggest um crypto project launching derivatives guys if you know what that is it's it's going to be huge it's going to be huge it's going to be so huge and synthetics is the leader in that they're one of the oldest out there um synthetics and ave are actually 2017 icos that actually made it that actually delivered right a lot of those 2017 icos <laughs> they pumped and they didn't do shit right i'm continuing on i'm going to pull out some i'm just going to pull out my favorites right i'm going to pull out my watch list here and i'm gonna, like my favorite ones honestly are all DeFi protocols, right? And so in this um like 30 to 60 range, like there are some freaking gems. Like, yo, there's some gems out there. You know, these guys, makers coming in here at 1.3, they're the, the biggest DeFi protocol out there. Like that arbitrage between the fact that, I don't know if that's the right word, but the fact that maker is only worth 1.4 billion on the market and there's 4.4 billion in its protocol. What? <laughs> That's, that's crazy to me. So I, I think Maker will have a great year. Maker's been around for a long time. They're the coin that actually works in conjunction with DAI. Um, they've created the decentralized stablecoin of DAI. Most stablecoins are centralized. So that's a really interesting project, creating a decentralized stablecoin. All of these products that I'm talking about, guys, are decentralized financial products. Compound, another protocol just like Aave. Compound has $3 billion locked in. It's only worth not even a billion. <laughs> It's crazy. Sushi Swap, the the clone of Uni. I didn't like them when they first came out because they were direct clone, but they've actually found their own niche. They've actually decided to go. They're be building partnering with Polkadot. They're going to be really focusing on that ecosystem. I like the direction they're going in. Yearn Finance. We've talked about that coin as well on the on the on the on this weekly webinar. They're doing great. Kusama is a blockchain on built on Polkadot. And the graph, I'm going to leave it off with the graph because we've been I've been going on and on. The graph guys um is a the graph. I, I'm this. I'm finally confident enough to bring this and kind of give you guys my scoop on the graph, and then I'm going to wrap this um, weekly webinar up. Um, the graph, you know, I I, I I like this project a lot. Now, the one thing I don't like about it, 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 it does have a low circulating supply, um, very very low, twelve percent. That's yikes. Um, and only a third of the tokens i believe are out on the market even for anybody to have the other two thirds are being kept for different people developers things like that you know so this project definitely is like centralized it's, it's set up for some big whales to make some fucking stacks which also it could be seen as a good thing right um they launched this project on coinbase um coinbase is a backer of graph um, but to give you guys the fundamentals on graph, why it's so valuable. Also, the technicals are looking good. I've just started finally wanting to give a public endorsement of it after seeing structure break here and some respecting, right? And so you had your ICO pump when the market hits, when the coins hits the market, they all do this. Uniswap did this. They pump like crazy. And then it obviously cools down. The bots usually pump them up. They find support. Once you see your break in structure, you know, you got your accumulation phase going on. You're expecting the leg up. That's what I'm expecting on graph. Right, let me pull out just to give you guys a better view of it on uh, technicals but i i really look at the graph as something like chainware because the graph is what's called middleware so the graph is something that and this is one my last one that you know like if this one jumps into the top 10 guys top 25 sheesh we're gonna looking at a nice rally because the graph is only sitting here in a market cap of 600 million dollars right and so guys i'm i'm more conservative in my investments you know i'm not really looking at caps under 100 i have a couple of my eyes like mostly polka dot projects polka starter if you're deep in that um sauce and you want to know what i think a low low cap coins polka starter is my cap what i'm looking at now um, but I really like these projects in this like under a billion range because that was when I first got into Ave and Uni. They were under a, a billion, right? And now they're multi-billion. You know, we've 
we've we've had really good plays on those um on those tokens so seeing those tokens once they've already gained some market traction once they've delivered some products once they've had good marketing their technicals align their fundamentals align then we, yeah let's let's look for that pump and the graph is really really what i'm looking to have a great 2021 like i said it's backed by coinbase and it's some, some impressive backings like this marketing is nice guys it's just like you look on here it's just dope and so to explain to you guys what the graph is, and this will give you, might, might FOMO some of you guys into buying some. If you're gonna do that, set up a dollar cost average. Don't just throw a stack at it. <laughs> um, set up a dollar cost average, right? You can do it on Coinbase. That's what's dope about this one. Um, so graph and chain link, I consider very similar because they are called middleware. Middleware is exactly what it sounds like. It's something that sits in between something. It's in the middle, right? Um, for my Chainlink fans, what is Chainlink the middleware of, right? What does Chainlink do, guys? What, what's the big claim to fame for Chainlink? Where's my Link Marines at? Why, why is people so bullish on Chainlink? Because it connects two things, right? It connects the blockchain to exactly, thank you guys, the real world, the data. And the fact that it's not that the data is anything special. It's the fact that Chainlink is the, the the connection between the blockchain world and the real world and chainlink is the middleware chain you need chainlink to connect the real world to the data i mean to connect the real world data to blockchain so it's a middleware the graph is the same thing it's a middleware solution what does the graph do the graph sorts data the graph sorts data so blockchains in the past they didn't have outside world data right and example of how link would apply right um right now i really believe that central banks and i think that um even uh, commercial banks are going to integrate link because that's going to be able to connect them to DeFi markets right that's going to be able to pool biggest um biggest use case right now for link also like not just behind making partnerships connecting data into the world um but for for current blockchains the biggest example of uh chain link being used is um, so data feeds, price data feeds specifically, price data feeds. So like decentralized exchanges, where are they getting the quotes for their prices and their tokens? They like get through Chainlink, right? Uniswap, Binance, even Binance uses Chainlink. So these, everyone needs Chainlink. You need the data. You need the, you need the outside data. You need Chainlink. And the graph is the exact same thing because what the graph did to the, what the graph wants to do to the blockchain is just like what a very famous company wanted to do to the internet. In the beginning stages of the internet, um, the, yeah, Peter definitely understands that shit way more, like the inner workings, how it works. I just understand it's critically necessary to have chain link. And there's definitely like oracles are a huge solution. They might build them on blockchains instead, um, instead of having a third party. But, oh, AP3i, that's what you're saying. AP3i support first party directly from the source. Yeah, so there's different implementations on how oracles is working. You have to get deep into that, but continue on the graph. Graph reminds me of a very famous internet company because in the earlier stages of the internet, it was just the, the internet, right? All these different pages, all these different websites. And there was, there was lacking one key feature. It, you couldn't find shit on the internet, right? Because there was no such thing as what's called a search engine. So drop it in the chat. If you know what company I'm talking about, there's a very famous company that figured out how to search, sort the internet. They figured out how to make the internet accessible and easy to search and access, which gave us tremendous insights. Yes, it's Google, right? And that's the exact same claim to fame that the graph has, whether it can deliver on it, whether the technology works that way, I, that is to be determined. That is very to be determined, but the graph is the Google of blockchain. That's their claim to fame. And they wanna sort this blockchain world, because for developers who are building applications, they need feedback, you know, they want to do some testing, data testing, and that's very difficult, and it can be very tedious. And so the graph actually solves that problem and sorts the data on the blockchain. Like I said, it's middleware. Essentially, the way I understand it is that this is something that would become very, very necessary, basically, for most projects to use. And it's just something, oh, the graph did this for us. It's a protocol, just like Chainlink, that could be very, very, very useful, very, very key. And so guys, I love the graph. I have been building a position now, like I said, ever since we broke the structure, 
I wanted to see that good mitigation. I don't know if that quite is it. You know, we could come down path on here, but that that um inbounds that we had playing off that, you know, we destroyed it actually. But it's crazy to see that wick on that daily candle there. So the graph is on my radar. That is what I like, you know, popping up in there. And like I said, for the graph to even hit into the top 10, it needs to get to, to 6 billion, which is a 10X, guys. That puts the graph at five bucks. And I like 10Xs. Who doesn't like 10Xs? <laughs> who wants to 10X some of their crypto bags? Drop a 10 in the chat. Who wants to, who wants to 10X one of your bags? And guys, I have to, this is a disclaimer now. <laughs> I got you excited. <laughs> I've gotten you hyped. Is that you need to, you need to use risk management. You need to have a fucking plan <laughs> and don't invest with your emotions, right? The best way to do this, guys, remember, is the dollar cost average. Take the emotions, take the decision making out of your own hands. Set that auto buy up. Forget about it. Next time you hear cryptos pop in, check that piggy bank that you've been stacking Bitcoin. You're like, oh, shit. <laughs> I'm glad I've been buying Bitcoin for the last two months. Got great dog. Peter got grabbed for fucking 30 cents. My man, savage. Guys, I'm going to open it up now. I'm going to shut down this recording. I appreciate you guys. You guys already know. Buy Bitcoin. Short the banks. Peace out. Till next week.